So let's create some planets. Um, I think that's the next order of business. Um, so everything comes out of nothingness. And um, nothingness is an experience, it's, it's an idea. And when I say nothingness, I know, what do you think of when I say the void, you might think of a black screen, right? But it's not even that. So it's inconceivable. Now every good creation myth starts with a good void, a good nothingness, blank slate, and then there's a cataclysmic interruption of that nothingness to create something. And the creation of something out of nothing, how does one do that? That sounds crazy. And that's the point, quite literally the point, because it is nothingness coming together into a literal point. And what is that point? The first point of our tetractus, infinite consciousness, the pure I am, OK? Um, it is also happening in the universe through gravity, like you know, the black hole in the center of the galaxy, the sun in the center of the solar system, all of that. There's this nucleus. The ego itself is a nucleus. It's something that says, please stay together so we can experience this life. That's a literal thing, by the way. Like the ego is, it's, it's not a bad thing. Ego's great. We wouldn't be having this, this fun without our ego that says, oh, I am a being with a story. It's like uh, playing a video game. It's an avatar. If you didn't have your avatar, what would you do? Well, I guess you could play in first person, but that's still the ego, right? <laughs> <sighs> um, so this infinite nothingness comes together, and it contracts, and it forms a, a dot, a point of awareness. And this is literally the glyph of the sun. And what does the sun do if not come together and create this gravitational dance between the planets so we can experience what we're experiencing? And talk about as above, so below, that's what we're doing right now. Anahata has created this gravitational point. We all come here. This class created this gravi gravitational point, etc. cetera. So, um, so this is the glyph of the sun. In Kabbalah, this is called Zim Zoom, right? Vruk, 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 zim Zoom. Um, now, this is a very old, this is a, the, the 16th century representation of Ptolemy's geocentric model of the universe. So, yeah, we're going back a bit. Um, so, yeah, outmoded physically, but spiritually, maybe not so much. Or maybe not out, outmoded physically. I've never been outside. I don't know. Maybe it's flat. Half the people walk out. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> maybe the earth is flat. I don't know. I like this. Maybe. I don't know. Wait, are you serious? <laughs> Uh, so the Earth is the center, and then in this system, it goes Earth, and then the Moon, then Mercury on top of that, and then Venus, and then the Sun, and then Mars, and then um, Jupiter, and then Saturn, and then the firmament, eventually hitting the Empyreon. And the Neoplatonic mystical philosophy, which was also hanging out with Hermeticism, was that to ascend... To, um, to, ha to have spiritual enlightenment, you would have to climb this ladder of the planets until you eventually became the whole universe itself. Now, is that literally happening? Potentially. Like, let me say, is it physically happening? I don't know. Maybe. Um, is it magically happening? It can. Is it psycho-spiritually happening? Absolutely. That's what it all is about. Um, so it's expanding beyond the point of the ego into everything, and that's how you... You know, that's the spiritual path. At least for me, it is. Um, so yeah, let's keep going. Um, this comes from the the, uh, the Pymander. Has anyone read the Pymander, Poimandres? It's a hermetic text. It's pretty cool. Hermeticism's cool. It's really a, a big influence on magic. I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, hermeticism comes from Hermes Trismegistus, who's this dude who was really a group of mystics who were writing under his name, most likely, and. Um, yeah, it was just deep stuff. It was kind of a Greco-Egyptian fusion of philosophy and mysticism. Um, but I'm going to read you something out of the, the Pymander. It says, For the mind being God, one, male and female, two, life and, life and light, two-ness, brought forth by his word another mind or workman, which being God of the fire and the spirit fashioned and formed seven governors. Okay, we're jumping to seven now which in their circles contain the sensible wor world for, whose government or disposition is called fate or destiny. So what this is describing is the infinite consciousness 
becoming a duality and then saying, okay, let's create some stuff. Whenever you see the word logos, logos means like will or intent of the universe or intelligence of the universe to create. It's the creative agency of source, of cosmos. Um, the governors of the seven planets. So it's like this universe says, okay, I am pure consciousness and because I am everything, there's no way I can be any one thing. So I will create a few things to create for me. Oh yeah, now there's a little bit of a hierarchy. He's kind of putting a team together, which I really need to do for my business, so um, <laughs> one day. Uh, so he's putting a team of seven together, and those are the seven planets, and they each reflect above what we experience below, as above, so below. Um, dun, dun, dun. Um, we've got some alchemy hanging out in there too. So where are we at? We're at 2.51, so we didn't even get to the first planet. That's fine. You know what? I really want to give you guys a theory, because now if you take this, then you can go read up on what do the planets mean, and you, if you have this, it's like, it's just a more fun thing, I find. So the planets, um, let's jump in. Saturn. Um, and again, if you want a copy of this, you can download it. Uh, or if you want me to send it to you, just throw your email in the thing and I can send it to you. Um, Saturn is the greater malefic, and I don't know how to say that word, but I say malefic, and male the greater maleficent, and the farthest of the visible classical planets. So Saturn being the farthest away uh, represents limitation, the absolute farthest you can go. It represents boundaries and borders, and it, it brings us form. So without Saturn, we would just be in this mush of consciousness, which we were, and it was fun, but then we got bored, so we did all this extra stuff, right? We separated out into different people, and now we're having a good time at Anahata's purpose. Um, but we'll probably go back into the washing machine of consciousness. But Saturn comes in and says, oh, let's actually give you a form so that you can be a separate thing. Saturn is also the disciplinarian. Um, limitation is big so Saturn governs like things things to do with endings and it's connected to the universe card or the world card um, yeah let's maybe I'll hold it up do we want to do the planet well I already started the planet so we'll just do the planets and then we'll try to get to the signs um, we probably won't get to the miners today but I did do a class on the miners so there's that um, so Saturn is uh, the world card, and she is a representation of a lot of things, Sophia, the Shekinah, but this wreath is like a symbol of the edge of anything. Um, cool, so she's hanging out here, and this is Saturn. So the world card has to do with conclusions and endings and fulfillments. Very positive card, um, but the Saturn influence comes in because it's the ending. It's the last card of the major arcana. So it, it would make sense that it ends with Saturn. Um, there's a lot of other things we can talk about, but I'm going to, yeah. Any questions on the world card and Saturn? I love Saturn. So Saturn return, I know it sucks, right? This is like late 20s. It's like, oh, God, what am I doing with my life? Um, but the world card is saying, well, you did she, she kind of takes everything away from you, and the, only, the last thing you're left holding on to is the thing you're meant to do with your life, which is really beautiful. It's a cleanse. So Sa Saturn ends a lot of stuff and says, all right, really, what is the form that you want to take in this world? Like, cut the shit. What, what is it? Like, what, what's the one thing you want to do? And, and it allows you an opportunity to begin self-actualization and say, oh, this is what I'm meant to do. This is what I'm going to give back to the world, all that good stuff. Um, cool. Jupiter. Ah, love Jupiter. So Jupiter is the greater um, benefic, meaning the good guy, good cop. Saturn's bad cop. Jupiter's good cop. And Jupiter comes in and gives you really everything you want. It's very fun. It's spacious. It's merciful. He's like, um, yeah, he's a good time. He is the largest of the planets, and I have read that Jupiter and the sun actually orbit each other. Oh, shit. Don't tell the sun that. Um, and what's cool is Jupiter also represents something called the Demiurge. The Demiurge is a Gnostic deity figure that represents the god who thinks he's god. Oh, shit. Now, 
Now, I'm, I, I, I don't know the first thing about Gnosticism, but from my very limited research, there's many forms of it. So it's not like, oh, Gnosticism is this thing. Earlier forms, I believe, contradict, contradict with later forms. But there's a cool connection here because the Jupiter and the Wheel of Fortune is like the reality that is so expansive that thinks it is the true reality but is not. And that's kind of what the Wheel of Fortune is. We're riding this Wheel of Fortune, this Wheel of Samsara. We're like, look at the world. It's like, um, it's like that mermaid. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> And it's like, she's like, oh, look at all this stuff. But then she gets on, on the outside of the water and she's like, oh, shit, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, and so it's like, the, it's, and it's the relationship between the external world of ups and downs and karma and samsara versus the internal world in the center, which is everything, everywhere, all at once. Go watch that movie. That's everyone's homework if you haven't watched it. It's the third person this weekend. Yeah. It's um, years of occult study in one movie. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, it's a little bit destabilizing for some. When I watched it, I was with this date, and I felt so bad because the movie was so, like completely outshined this first date with this guy. I was like, I just got to be with this movie. I got to go. I got to watch it again. I got to think about it. I, got, I just got to be with the movie. It was so good. You did this. <laughs> it was so good. But yeah, great movie. Um, so what, what else we got about Jupiter? Manifestation, um, the largest planet. Rules, Sagittarius and Pisces. I'm not going to do rulerships and exaltations today because we'll be here forever. Mm -hmm. But I will say that if you study the rulerships and ex exaltations from the patterns of the planets and how they act upon the signs, it can get very deep. And for example, like Venus ruling Libra. Libra is the world, is the scales, the world of cause and effect, right? Um, but Venus is love. And so the idea is the world of car cause and effect, which is karma, which is Libra, is coming out of love. Like, it's the same thing. Um, yeah, it can go really, really deep. It, it's not, yeah. Would you mind just quickly defining exaltation? <gasps> yes. Then? Thank you. I hear it a lot, <laughs> but I don't, I don't. Uh, So rulership is the planet rules that sign. That's like their kingdom. That's what they own. Um, and then uh, the seven planets each rule one or two signs, and then uh, the, each planet is exalted in a sign, which means the sign that they are most welcomed in. It's like they're the, they're the favorite guest, so they get along. Uh, there are also falls and uh, detriments, which are negative relationships, which uh, we won't get into, but it's like places where they're enemies or frenemies, uh, where they don't like to be. And it all has to do with just the energy of different things, you know? Um, but yeah, so Jupiter, any questions on Jupiter and the Wheel of Fortune? Cool. Um, let's go to Mars. Ah, oh, we could love a Mars. Mars is, where is he? So Mars is the tower. Mars is the god of war. Pretty, yeah, that's a pretty obvious. Um, it's destruction. Um, it's, uh, but it's also the will to live. It's adrenaline. It's our muscles. And it's also sometimes sex drive as well, sometimes. Um, so there's like this primal urge to live, which is also kind of um, sometimes not living, sometimes destruction. Uh, let's see what else we have. Mars rule, no, we're not doing rulerships. Um, the first deacon. Uh, so de every sign of the zodiac, everyone's seen a zodiac, right? All the signs rotating around. So each sign is divided into three deacons. Each deacon is 10 degrees, and each of those um, deacons are ruled by a planet themselves. So there are de decanic rulerships. And um, the first deacon of the zodiac is ruled by Mars. And my interpretation of that is the Mars force comes in into that first deacon and says, to create a wheel, we have to remove something to create something. It's like the first carving into the block to create a statue. Um, this is also said in the Sefer Yetzirah, it's, which is a Kabbalistic, well, the first Kabbalistic text. It says, Yah engraved. That's the first line. It doesn't say, and Yah is God. It doesn't say God created or God spoke. It said, God engraved 
and then created the universe. So there was a removal to create a space to create something else. Now, what was that removal of? Dinosaurs, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but kind of, yeah. Yes, uh, that's so funny. Yeah, dinosaurs is it. Yeah. And also the removal of the pure oneness going into two-ness, the destruction of the oneness to experience the two-ness. Um, but I like dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. Adam's rib, yeah. The removal. Yes, I love that. Yes, totally. Um, oh, maybe this is Adam's rib. Whoa. Which is also connected to Shiva and the lingam and all the stuff. Shiva and Shakti. Yeah, we can go in. Um, this is what I love about, see how it's so, mu I find this to be more exciting than like, the tower means you're gonna get in a car accident. And like, and like, that's cool too, and it can predict a car accident, and that's helpful because it may change your route, and that's cool, I love that. Love reading Tower for Divination, but it's like when the symbols like start running into each other, it's like Yeah, you just turn up the dials on the operating system, and you're like, oh fuck, it's all happening. Um, okay. Let's move to the sun. What time do we have? 3.01. Let's move to the sun. Sun is simple. Sun is, um, so sun is life, light, energy, compassion, ego, also vanity, because it is the ego, right? It is the pulling into the center. So there's a vanity to this. But there's a joy of being the self, right? Um, there's, pure, there's spontaneity in this card. Um, yeah, the gravitational center. Yeah, it's very much a card connected to Christ consciousness. Oh, look, three daisies and one daisy, three and one. Whoa, is that the Holy Trinity becoming one? Oh, shit. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, waves and particles, and there's so many things here. But yeah, and the wall is a, is, uh, a symbol of that boundary that allows the ego to exist as a self. That exi the wall is a boundary that allows for self-consciousness as opposed to capital S self-consciousness. So how we become ourselves. So like our, uh, everything that we are in this moment, whatever boundaries allow for that to be so we don't melt into everything else, um, which is what I'm doing half the time. Can't keep my shit together, um, right? Uh, keeping the shit together is the sun. Now, the say, who said same? I don't know, it's the Pisces moon. Pi Pisces, yes, it's the Pisces moon, it's like, it's like, I'll feel whatever you're feeling. What do you want to feel for tonight? <laughs> like, I'll just say, what? what do you want for dinner? What do you want to feel? <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, that's fun. Uh, what else do we want to go? So yeah, sun, life-giving, radiance. Um, Venus. Venus is the planet of love. And where's Venus? She's over here. Justice is out of order. She's always trying to mix things up. Um, okay, so Venus is over here. Venus is the empress. Venus is the planet of love. And what Venus does is it, it, it uh, provides for our relationships. Not just romantic relationships, but all relationships. So the relationship that, uh, for example, in an art piece, the relationships between the colors and the forms. Um, a deep meditation is to contemplate the how color and form are mutually arising like can you have color without form or form without color like shape and color um, but venus comes in and she allows for all the relationships and the diversity of sensation so that we can experience all different things including emotions but also just senses um, and al she also governs relationships with people romantic relationships fa uh, family relationships um, and so she is represented in the Empress as the mother of life itself, as Gaia, as um, she also shows up in, um, in the apocalypse somewhere. I don't, she's like clothed with the sun, with the, with the moon at her feet. Yeah, this stuff is apocalyptic too, but that's a whole nother class. Um, but yeah, the 12 star. oh look, 12 stars in her hair. Oh shit, 12 signs, there we go. Um, and she is the number three giving birth to the 12 by acting upon the number four, which is the material earth. So yeah, right? It's good stuff. Um, 
so yeah, she's cool. She's love. Love in a broad sense, in, in the capacity for relationship building. Um, so we have v uh, we got Sun, we got Venus. Let's go to Mercury. So if Venus is all love and all about the relationship, then Mercury is like the method through which those relationships arise and develop and change and maybe even die. Um, and that's all the magician. So Mercury, Hermes, Hermetic, the Hermetic philosophy comes from Hermes. Hermes is a messenger god, right, with the sandals. So um, he is also a deity that may be compared to the Logos. And like I said before, I'll, I'll, we'll we will reiterate the Logos is the creative agency of the universe or the intelligence behind the universe or the will of the universe. So the idea is um, Hermes and the Mercury is the messenger of the gods. So when we connect to the Logos, when we connect to the will of the universe, the intelligence underlying all of this, we are connecting to Hermes. We are hearing from the messenger of the gods. And what is that message? We might say because this is card number one, it is the tarot. This is the message. This is the, the gods coming down through Mercury, through the channel and saying, hey, this is what's going on and it's all for you. So I don't know why you're freaking out all the time, right? <laughs> It's a playground. Um, any questions on Mercury and the Magician? So uh, Mercury is also magic. Anything that connect, uh, creates a connection from one place to another place, as above, so below, hermetic axiom, hermetic catchphrase, um, all that good stuff. OK, and then the moon, which is the high priestess. The moon is really deep. The moon. Mm. Last night, right? Pure reflection. It's the ability, it really comes down to the ability of me to reflect upon my being by watching your being, um, reflecting each other's light. Because what does the moon do? It steals the photons of the sun and puts on a show. It reflects the self through another way. It mirrors back light. Um, and the high priestess, uh, exemplifies this mystery. Now the moon is also connected to the subconscious and what does the subconscious do? It reflects the light of conscious experience. So all of your conscious experience is interpreted by the subconscious through these really quick deductions and those deductions come forth and paint a worldview for you, a reality tunnel. And that reality tunnel that it paints is the imagination and that imagination is the empress because the empress it, the the the, uh, the priestess is the virgin subconscious and the empress is that subconscious giving birth to imagination this is the biggest dance one of the there's a lot of dances but this is a fun one this is one of my favorites right that conscious experience is the magician cool so from one, two, and three, we have conscious experience, subconscious deductions, giving birth to imagination, and all images that you have in your mind, in your world, about yourself, about the world. And that's the beauty of creativity, which is creating relationships between things, which is Venus. I just want to let that simmer for a moment because it's a good one. Um, I love watching you all like register and I love watching different gears turn it's like such a really unique satisfaction like <laughs> it's so fun um, I love this stuff because um, I know when I have moments where I'm like oh wow it's like it feels so good um, cool um, yes yes I love them they're so fun yeah 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 it's so fun um, now you can take all these planets and map them onto the Tree of Life if you want to add Kabbalah to your esoteric repertoire, if that's your thing or not. I love Kabbalah, I'm a super Kabbalah geek, um, but you don't have to, but they're connected here. Mm -hmm.